But what I would talk about was the idea that all the mythologies of the world are kind of like this Hubble telescope image. They are like galaxies individually spread out throughout a, a complete universe. And the world is the universe. And all the mythologies are sort of origin stories of various cultures throughout the world, beginning at the beginning of time and stretching all the way out. So at, at any given time, all the mythologies exist together concurrently, and they are simply separated by geography. So it's important because some people had the conception that, hey, Kratos at the end of God of War 3 destroyed the world. Well, he destroyed the, what they believed the world was in Greece, which was their world. Everybody believed their world was the only world. In fact, we still believe that today. In the world, right, in the real world, all of these mythologies are sort of origin stories of cultures separated by geography, right? And they exist from the beginning of time telling these, these civilization stories all the way out so that if in the time of, of the gods you were to travel around the world it's like traveling around the world now and interacting with you know different people but those people happen to be gods in the mythological times and monsters all around that all of the mythologies exist on this planet simultaneously they're all creation stories that date all the way back to the beginnings of the planet itself but these are the cultures sort of creation story of that culture but they are sort of simultaneously coming up in different geographic locations on on the earth and and somebody moving between all of those in a time when it was far more about the gods wandering the earth uh, is connecting all of that together. Here's a dumb question. Do you consider in the God of War mythology, are these mythologies sprouting out because people believe in them or are they sprouting up independent from humans? I think it's independent. Okay. But I think there is a power of the belief as well that continues on it, right? It's maybe a little bit of that Sam Neill Merlin movie, right? Where everybody decides to forget magic and stop believing in it, and it goes away. There is a sense that in our world, the Norse gods existed far before the, the, the Viking times, right? So that basically there's all this talk in the, the, the era of the Vikings of the Vikings fighting for Odin and Thor and, and Freya, uh, but they were abandoned by these gods because they're not around, right? But they were around long, long, long before in a time when it was far more barren uh, in Northern Europe. And basically, that's our time, right? Our time in which they are connecting. But, you know, in Egypt, the pharaohs were sort of the, the living embodiment of the gods during a time when it was very crowded for humans. So. There's an interesting sort of connection with each mythology. It's slightly different, right? It's slightly different in which their creation story comes about. Is there a lore Bible? Do you really get up in your head? And does the team get up in their head about how does this larger universe of God of War fit together with different mythologies? Do you guys have those ideas locked down? Yeah, we actually created a, a, a timeline that talks about during the Greek era, the ending of the Greek era, the period of time in between, and all the time leading up, what was going on in sort of the Norse myth and how it's all connecting and all sort of the pre-things happening, so even things we're not covering in the game are indicated little bits here and there. Uh, but if developers wanted more of the lore background, there is a Bible somewhere that says like, all right, around this area is when this mythology bubbled up and so therefore it exists. Yeah, we have it fairly closely guarded in the sense that uh, there are a few people that have it, but we don't want to have too many people starting to, to dig into other areas. Uh, but. To keep everything consistent, we have that fantastic timeline that helps everybody understand. Yeah. Um, is there anything to that? Are there other pantheons in this universe that Kratos might go explore? Oh, totally. Like, I've always looked at this universe as, you know, like our world, right? It is, uh, the, the geography separates the, the cultural mythologies, right? The cultural mythologies are stories of the zero point to present day. These are the, the, the birth and the origin of these cultures so that, that Norse mythology exists in Scandinavia and simultaneously across the world, the Mayan mythology has its origins, right? These are cultural stories about how they explain the, the sort of birth of their cultures. And I think, as I look at the, 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 the whole world, that, that each of these gods had their own domains, right? The same way that countries have their own domains and their own... And their leaders, own special their own fighting laws. moves and their own special sweet and weapons. And their own special and fighting moves and their own and upgrade DLC. trees. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, it, 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 is, it is a consistent single universe, I think, that as we start to look at these things, there's little bits here and there that let you know, like Tyr... Uh, had connections to a lot of other pantheons. And there is references in Norse mythology of gods interacting with Roman gods, right? It's very small, it's very minimal in their their sort of connections, but it shows that there was a, an awareness. You know, Egyptian was always fascinating to me. Uh, 
it, it, it sort of had a, a, a geography problem of if he's going to want to get away from his past, that's not far enough yeah. away, right? And there's also these great stories within there that, you know, the pharaohs are kind of like the physical manifestations of the gods, right? That the gods, talking about the gods, even walking the earth, they never really were doing that. A lot of it was the, the, the sort of living in other worlds. So there was some interesting stuff. One scene later on in the game where you find that missing piece from that ruin, the tra was it what Trace was reading? It was like, oh, there's a piece missing, and then it's the one depicting, I think, Tyr in the middle of ah, it's right, like yeah, the, yeah. the Greek symbol for it's like the Omega something yeah, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. So we were theorizing basically, like, is that kind of like you said, like Norse was the first mythology you want to go to, but then you also see um, the Triskelion, Triskelion, the Triskelion, and then you see the Eye of Horus. I might be butchering which these are. Is that intent maybe down the road to build a larger universe outside of just Greek and Norse? There is a connection to that. It, it, its first goal was to show how Tyr connected to all of these other mythologies. Tyr was kind of the first god of war within the Norse realm. Kind of got screwed over by the gods, right? And, and sort of pushed aside and Odin kind of took over in that respect. And we portrayed him as this interesting kind of like the, the more beloved god, the god who actually uh, connected to other mythologies, other cultures, and was trying to unify and bring them together, but kind of rabble-rousers of the Aesir's sort of ruined that. And there's these references in the mythology of actually having certain characters actually reference or interact with, say, the Roman gods, which I thought was always fascinating that I don't know if it's simply a later translation or even when the, the Christians started to move Norse mythology to uh, away from paganism and more towards Christianity, that maybe they had folded some of these things in. But I always love the idea that on the planet, you know, since the beginning of time, all these cultures are having their origin stories, right? And geography is separating all of them so that concurrently all these mythologies are going on, right? There isn't one that says, this is how everything was. It was, this is how this culture was brought up, and this culture was brought up in this way, and who knows if they were to crisscross and have some crazy Norse and Egyptian and Mayan Justice League of people. I originally started pitching this to people, um, and, and saying, you know, the mythologies of the world are sort of cultural origin stories separated by geography. So when you think about the mythologies, I, I say the visual is the, the, the Hubble telescope image of all the, the, the galaxies, right? That, that super long exposure shot that shows all the galaxies of the world as part of a whole universe, right? And I think you look at the planet and it is really just these myth mythological stories all over the world that kind of exist at the beginning of time all the way into present. So, you know, historically in their timelines, you know, a lot of these stories are about before man. Right, so that they're like, this happened before, and we were talking about what this was. So these connections to all of that was, okay, when he leaves Greece, he is leaving sort of the, 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 the sort of ecosphere of this mythology, but there are so many others that exist all over the place, and that when he goes to Scandinavia, he ends up in Scandinavia, um, it is kind of this line of demarcation, right? This sort of BCAD change uh, to, okay, it is still him, but he has entered into this sort of new belief system, right? It is like going to another country, right? That, you know, everyone's speaking a different language. There is a different sort of set of rules and cultural norms, right? Uh, it's just, it happens to be that there's a bunch of gods hanging around with a bunch of monsters hanging around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I remember you saying not that long ago that this is this version of Kratos, but you could delve into other mythologies with him in the future yeah. and put in. And I think that's really interesting because it's something that, you know, it, having him be part of one and the idea that it would overlap is jarring, but also really interesting. It's like you can do a lot of weird stuff there yeah. with different mythologies just intertwining. And so. having like even slight tangential connections, like I, I very, very, very intentionally have this period of time from the end of three to the beginning of this game in which we don't tell anybody how long it is, right? Mm -hmm. I know how long it is. The writers know how long it is. No one else. Dwarves, like I have like very like cursory North mythology knowledge, but dwarves are like by far the thing I do the least about going into this game. Um, I find it really interesting, the idea of them traveling between realms so easily. Um, what, because obviously like they give you access to the gateways, which within a realm allow you to sort of fast travel, but like you, you still rely on the Bifrost to go between realms. like. What what is the mythology behind dwarves traveling so easily? Uh, this also connects to gnomes uh, and dwarves and this idea that in some of the stories they would show the gnomes or the dwarves run behind a rock and then disappear and they wouldn't know where they went. So we sort of take next steps of how we're interpreting the the realms because the realms are all basically, you know, 
nine realms that look very similar to this on the same sort of space, and then you move between them like dimensions, right? Uh, and they are just able to, without the use of a Bifrost, move between these realms. The way I, I kind of see the uh, the mythologies is kind of like that uh, Hubble telescope image mm. of all of the galaxies. The right? ultra-deep field. Yeah. yeah. So that image shows the universe with all of its individual galaxies. Each galaxy is kind of like uh, a representation of a mythology. Mm. You know, and sort of wrap that around the Earth. And at any given moment, all of these mythological belief systems uh, existed. You know, they all deal with a creation myth around their region. It's just separated by geography. Mm. So that while the height of some of these mythological beliefs are at different time periods, uh, a lot of them kind of align with a, a single point mm. in time. Uh, even this one, we're not really in the Viking era. Right. A lot yeah, of people yeah. think Norse, they think Viking, but there's really this amazing prehistory, sort of the migration, uh, and then prior to that, the pre-migration era, where in the Viking era, they always talked about the gods have abandoned us. Mm. Thor and Loki and Odin all walk the earth at one point, but yeah. they're not around anymore. Uh, they fight for them, but they're not there. And uh, this idea that we're at is, is saying we're at a prehistory point when the gods did walk the mm. earth, when, when monsters were real before they became extinct. It's kind of cool. It's a fun space to be in because it allows us to paint our own image of Norse mythology as opposed to anyone else's. So what I was setting up into was this idea that Athena had died and was the first person in the pantheon of gods to actually have a selfless act, to die from a selfless act. So she had kind of ascended to this higher level and then at first she's somewhat altruistic and be like, hey, wow, okay, I did pretty good. But then she starts to realize, wait a minute, I can actually affect the rest of the world. I don't want anybody else to get up here. The, the arc of Athena was the most important arc of the entire series, at least when I started working on it, was to kind of show that she was the one Greek god who did something selfless. She sacrificed herself to protect Zeus, and that actually allowed her to ascend to a higher realm, and she ended up realizing, oh look, there's more power up here. So it sort of corrupts her a little bit, and then she's sort of you know, orchestrating the demise of the other gods. A lot of the times the gods were sort of metaphors and, and stories about the corruption of power, right? When you have that much power, that much sort of absolute control, it's very easy to start sliding. And Kratos was the example of how far he can fall when he's given all that power. God of War II really explored that sense of he really went way off the deep end and became worse than Aerie. She was selfless. She died protecting Zeus, right? But in that selfless act, she was the first god to be selfless, and that was allowing her to ascend to a higher plane. She ends up going into a place that is higher than everybody else, and it totally messes with her head. It be she becomes just as bad as everybody else because she experiences a power greater than everybody, so that it is kind of always that, that mess. I have to address a few points related to this particular statement from Corey, as people often misunderstand it. When asked if Midgard is the Earth or the entire universe, Corey says it's just Scandinavia on Earth, putting down both options and denying them if we rephrase it. Before we go ahead, note that universe has multiple meanings, with the second one, aside from the obvious first, being a particular sphere of activity or experience. As you have seen from his previous explanations, the second definition is in agreement with what he has said. Anyways, Corey says that they have all carved out their piece of history. When talking about the universe though, they are, in my mind, referring to the universes that they have dominion over. The greater actual universe has yet to be explored. Here, Corey puts the word universe in quotation marks when discussing the universes over which the gods have dominion. As he isn't quoting what someone said, referring to a literary title or such, the act of putting the word in quotation marks shows that the validity of that word is doubted, and considering that universe can mean domain, the sphere of activity, control, etc. The latter definition holds the best as compared to that which is commonly proffered. He also says that the actual universe, not multiverse, has yet to be explored. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you later, alligator.